All right, so again, the first couple of slides, you're not saying anything. I mean, you're not writing anything. You are just going to go ahead and um, you're just going to go ahead and uh, pay attention for a moment. And we're going to be talking about atmosphere and the energy transfer within the atmosphere. I know it's kind of difficult to see, so I will, for those of you who are watching the screen right now, so I'll be mentioning this stuff to you. So what is the atmosphere? It is what surrounds the earth and makes up the layers of gases. We talked about those layers. From the bottom is troposphere, then going up, stratosphere, mesosphere, thermosphere, and then out of this world is our exosphere. So argon, oxygen, and nitrogen are the abundant gases that are in the air. The most abundant gas from your quiz you just learned is nitrogen. And then there are the layers. And at each layer, there are various different temperatures. And here's just a picture example of the layers and their altitude and their temperature, which you saw from your quiz based on the altitude and the temperature. We do get our energy from the sun. We realize that every day when we wake up, when it's not so sunny, you can tell, basically, you're kind of gloomy and groggy if it's raining outside like today and yesterday. You really don't have much energy to do much, but when it's really sunny out, you want to put your gear on, you want to go out, you want to hang out with your friends, you want to go to the mall, you just want to be able to do something. I right, get out this house. So the sun provides most of the energy on the earth, and there's three things that happen um, when air receives the energy. Some of it is reflected back to the space by the clouds um, and bounces back. Some of it's reflected back to the atmospheric particles and some is reflected back to the Earth's surface, which is how we get our warmth and our sunlight. Here's where you'll start writing. So 99% of the radiant energy from the sun that reaches the Earth is either one, visible light. You need to be writing. The visible light is the majority of a mixture of colors that you see in the rainbow. This is how we see things daily. It's on your paper as well. The only thing you need to write is the visible light portion. So the, again, this is what we're able to see. This is what allows us to see everything that we do see. The second type is infrared radiation or IR. This is a form of energy with wavelengths longer than visible light and is not visible, but can be felt by heat. As heat, I'm sorry. More information about the infrared light. This is, you do not need to write anything yet. But greenhouse effect is a natural process where gases and clouds absorb infrared radiation. This is why we get that excess uh, carbon dioxide, well, from that excess carbon dioxide, this is why our earth heats up at times when it should not heat up, like uh, when we, <laughs> When we should be cold outside, oftentimes we're really warm, like last year, um, around this time into December. Remember, I was pregnant with Tyla, but I, I, when I came to work on December 3rd, before I had her, I just had on a little sweater and a scarf, and that's it. I didn't have to wear a jacket, a big jacket. That was in December, um, and I remember that day clearly because then I went into labor later on that night, and it was still nice outside. I didn't, it wasn't cold at all. So this is from the infrared radiation emitted to our Earth and our surface atmosphere, which warms up our Earth. We cannot see this heat, uh, this light, because but we can feel it through the heat. Here's where you're writing. The greenhouse effect is as the sunlight enters the atmosphere, it is converted to infrared radiation and is trapped by the gases in the air. That those trapped gases are called green light. I'm sorry, greenhouse gases. Mm 
Notice what's underlined is what you're writing. But pay attention so that you're not putting things in the wrong spot and what you are writing makes sense. Greenhouse gases are natural processes regulated by temperature. Notice it's regulated by temperature because as the sunlight enters the atmosphere, it's converted to infrared radiation. Remember, infrared radiation is not what we can see, but what we can feel. And we'll be moving on to talk about and predict and understand weather. So temperature is one of the most important elements for weather. When you say, what's the weather? You don't say, well, the sun was at a degree or an angle of, and it put this much air and this much radiation into, no, you said, what's the weather? Oh, it's gonna be 78 today. You wanna know what it's going to feel like. You wanna know what the temperature is going to be. Am I correct? Most times you might wanna know, okay, is it gonna rain? Is it gonna snow? Is it gonna hell outside? But when you say, what's the temperature gonna be like? You're trying to figure out what you're gonna wear so that you'll be comfortable according to whatever the temperature is. Any questions about this? Okay. Then the third type of radiant energy that reaches the earth is ultraviolet light. This is the UV light. This is like your black lights. This has a short wavelength and it can break chemical bonds. This is what people use to go tanning and they're breaking chemical bonds within their skin. <laughs> Yes, Does everyone have this? No, no. All right, and now we're going to be looking at three types of thermal energy that transfer, um, which transfer that work together in our troposphere. Remember, troposphere is where we been that's where our nitrogen and oxygen so this is where we li live so we're going to be looking at three types of thermal uh, energy if you notice you have a one two and three on your paper this is where you're going to be writing this information but then you have boxes underneath it's going to show you a picture of it on how it is in relation to the earth and then a picture of, um, that's a little bit more relevant for you to understand. So you're going to take a moment and draw to the best that you can the two pictures. These are for your notes so that you can better understand. All right. So number one, radiation. Radiation is the transfer of energy by electromagnet waves or energy that can travel through space. Individuals who are going through... Um, cancer treatment they go under radiation no they just does not say they go to space the transfer of energy by electromagnet <laughs> waves but it also can travel through this type of uh energy can travel through space not all types of energy can travel through space This radiation is used for cancer patients to hopefully help eradicate the damaged cells. Eradicate means to get rid of those damaged cells so they do not reproduce and create more damaged cells because as we learned last year, cancer is an overgrowth of cells. So here's the picture. Yes, we did. Uh, one of the pictures that you see there at the top, like I said, um, actually this is the whole picture that's gonna show you. Notice the sun is your thermal energy that radiates through the space so remember the sun is not in our world, in our earth, but it comes from outer space. It penetrates through our earth. That's one picture. The other picture is if you were holding your hands over a fire or over a heater, that thermal energy radiates from that heater or that fire to your hands. You want to draw both pictures. So I put a long box there. You can split the box in half, draw one, and then draw the other. If I were to draw, I'm not if, me drawing the first one with the sun and the arrows, I would make after the arrows an earth so that you know that that sun is radiating energy to the earth. You don't need to write the words. You just need to really draw the picture. But those arrows represent radiation.
I'll give you a moment to continue drawing. But now that you see these pictures, does this make sense? What radiation is? Radiate means to transfer to. And it doesn't have to be 100% neat. Just draw really quick to the best of your ability, and I'm going to move on, okay? Just draw a stick, a stick hand. Draw a, 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 a line with five sticks hands. I mean, label it a hand so that you know what it is later. You don't think it's something else. All right, I'm moving. The second type of thermal energy transfer that works together for heating our troposphere, remember we're looking at things that helps to heat our troposphere, to heat where we are, is conduction. This is a transfer of thermal energy, remember thermal means heat, by contact particles of matter and occurs where the atmosphere touches Earth. So for example, radiation is where that heat is transferred through the earth from space. Conduction is where that heat is actually touching the earth. So the first picture, your arrows should not be touching the earth. The second picture, the arrows should actually be touching the earth. The second picture, that you're drawing in your box. It's the second one, the bottom one. Is where if you're in, in when you're in the house and your windows open and the sun is shining inside the window and it's hitting a particular spot or if you're sitting or if you're sitting by the window and the sun is shining in, your arm will get hot or your head will get hot. If you're in the car and you're driving and the sun is steady beaming in there, the car heats up. The inside of the car heats up to where your parents turn on the AC. Or if it's a nice day but sunny, they may roll down the window. That is conduction. It is conducting heat. I would have to draw all the way on, the bottom. on the bottom, I would just maybe draw a house, a window, sun shining into the window, and then put something in the inside heating up the house. Because you'll notice in the summertime or in a days like when you get home from school, where in the morning time it's kind of chilly, but when you get home from school around 3, 30, 4 o'clock and it's sunny out, you're, at a, in a month like this, your parents are not turning on heat and they're not turning on AC. It, the temperature is a nice temperature where the sun is producing enough warmth in the house where it's not too cold and it's not too hot. Same thing like when you're driving in the car after school. It's not too cold, it's not too hot. So you don't need to turn on AC and you really don't need to roll, um, turn up the heat because the temperature is regulated. That sun has conducted enough temperature or enough heat where it's at a regulated state. But if we were in June, that conduction of thermal energy would be way too high where you would have to regulate it by putting on the AC. Does that make sense? Remember your boxes are long enough to split them in half to draw one picture on one side and one on another. Because we're talking about the earth and the atmosphere, so the top picture is what you really need to understand, but the bottom picture helps you to understand what the top is trying to tell you. Does that make sense? Through the window. Can I move to our third one? Okay. The third type of um, thermal energy transfer is convection. That's a CO. I know just the wall splits it. And uh, just so you know, I am getting something to even out this wall so that this will be better. So I'm working on that. Hopefully by next week. Turn it what way? Because people who sit over here back there have a hard time seeing it this way, so it's easier to have it this way. Plus, when I start doing labs demonstrations, 
um, it'll be easy for you to be facing me and me facing you and you still being able to see what I'm doing. I'm done. All right, so convection is the transfer of thermal energy by movement of particles within matter and heating air, um, air currents. Oh, hello, air currents. Not the touching, but now this is the moving of the particles. This is convection. So the um, conduction was the contact. Conduction, contact. You might want to underline those two for number two, conduction, contact, because you will need to know this. Convection is moving. So here's the picture for convection. The solar energy would be the sun. Remember, when the sun hits the ground or it hits a surface or it hits the water, remember, that hot, that heat, that uh, surface area, that's going to rise. Because remember, that air is less dense than cold air. Remember, cold air is dense or cold water is dense. We learned that in our lab when we did the two different types of water. The cold water is going to sink or rise. What is the cold water going to do? Sink to the bottom. The warm water is going to rise. And eventually, if it gets too warm, it's going to do what? Evaporate. Same thing with the air. Cold air is going to sink, while warm air is going to rise. And this is what this is showing you. This is convection. It's the movement of the energy. So as it heats up, if the surface is cold, it's going to warm that surface up. And that warm air is then going to rise into our atmospheric surface, warming up our air as well. This is why if you have a thermostat in your home that's upstairs and downstairs, you may not have paid attention to this, but you might be able to tell your parents this if they don't know or if they're already doing this. Chances are they will probably, to save energy bill, turn the heat up higher downstairs as opposed to upstairs because that heat downstairs is going to rise to warm the upstairs where you won't have to turn the thermostat on upstairs too high. That's how you save on your energy bill. This is some of the stuff that you need to know and learn for life, not just science. So when you get older and you move into your own home, you have this information to remember. So how can I save on my bill? Warm air thermal. She is what? The arrow at the bottom says over time because this all happens over time. The basic point that you need to understand from this picture is the rotation of the air. Warm air is going to rise, cool air is going to sink. And that's how the movement of air happens. And it's called convection, it's the movement. I'm gonna move because we, I, we really could get this done on today. Here's another picture of convection in the house where when you turn on your furnace or your thermostat, it moves um, throughout your house, which I just explained to you, where the warm air rises to the top. And so it circulates throughout your house to warm out your warm your entire house. Conduction would be the cold air going out. But the convection part that you really want to understand is in your house how it's circulating. You might want to draw that little picture where you have upstairs and a downstairs and that warm air moving to the upstairs and then circulating throughout your house where notice if you have a downstairs and you turn your heat on downstairs and it's cold upstairs that heat is going to do what when you turn it on downstairs it's going to go upstairs what's going to happen to that cold air it's going to sink that's how it gets warm that cold air sinks when that cold air goes back downstairs it's going to cool down downstairs but you have that thermostat on so what's going to happen the heat is and downstairs is going to Rise, and that's what this is showing to keep your entire house warm without having to turn on your upstairs thermostat if you have one. All right, looking at this picture, you don't need to write anything. This is just a test to help you understand. Is it conduction, convection, or radiation? So let's take a look at uh, this one here. Energy is transferred by contact. By contact. There's no contraction. Well, let's, 
And what do you say? Energy is transferred by the mass motion of molecules. This is this this picture here is showing someone touching the pot. This picture here is showing the heat from the stove uh, warming the water up. Okay, well we'll see. And this one is the energy transfer by electromagnet radiation, obviously. So yes, the first one is conduction. Conduct, it's touching. The next one is convection. And the last one is radiation. And if you wanted to maybe draw these pictures next to your boxes to help you in case the other ones didn't help you, that's all right too. But these are your notes, the best way that you're able to understand them. All right. Um, here where the water is being warm from this, this fire, what would this one be to the left? We're looking at this one here. The water is being warmed by the heat from the fire. This water is being risen from the top and, and the cold water is going to the bottom so that that can be warm. Okay, well, we'll see. This person is touching the pot. Okay, their hand is going to get hot if they touch the pot. And this one where the um, heat is heating, actually heating up the pot. Okay, we'll see. This one is convection because remember, it is the water moving, the movement of water. The transfer of energy to another object is uh, convection, conduction. This is touching. And then obviously the last are radiation. All right, and here's other pictures to help you understand as well, which is what we discussed. How are convection currents formed? Because we're talking about the Earth and we're going to be looking at um, weather in just a moment. But notice, remember we just talked about this, your cool air is going to sink, your warm air is going to rise. So as the sun is out, the sun is going to heat up this ground. That air is then going to rise from that being cool, it's going to rise to warm up, and then that cooler is going to drop, and that's going to be that circulation. So convection currents are formed as soon as this moves. By less dense air, less dense air warmed by Earth's surface, being forced to rise by the downward movement of cooler, more dense air. Would that less dense air be warmer or cooler air? Warmer. Make sure next to the less dense you put the warmer air. And notice it says warmed by Earth's surface. Warmer. I'm going to move because we got these last two points to cover and we'll be done and then we'll be moving. So if the bell rings, you have a moment. So I need to get this last part. All right. Explain temperature inversion. This is where temperature uh, inversion occurs in the troposphere. That's where we've been. When temperature increases as altitude increases and it traps pollution. That is going to be the result. Pollution will be trapped if the temperature increases and the altitude increases. Okay. Lastly, how is heat transferred in the troposphere? Tell me. You have them on your notes. There's three. Write it down, and that concludes our lesson for today. You want to make sure you study your notes because you probably will have a quiz.